Sunrise at California's Altamont Pass. On these rolling acres of rangeland, a new crop is being produced. Not grain or cattle, but energy. Energy generated as industry harnesses the wind. From land where only a few years ago, only cattle grazed, towers rise, and blades spin. For the Altamont Pass has wind. Wind to produce power for home and industry. The latent power in this valley has attracted scientists, engineers, and investors to these wind farms. All drawn by the potential for a new industry based on America's energy future. A future spearheaded by Fayette Manufacturing Corporation, led by its president, John Eklund. I spent 15 years with the Central Intelligence Agency in Washington. Um, the last eight years of that 15 years uh, studying energy supplies and the last five years as director of the Petroleum Supply Analysis Center at the agency. We looked at world oil supplies, at the rate at which they were being discovered and being consumed, and the inevitable conclusion was that uh, U.S. supplies were dwindling rapidly uh, we're increasingly reliant on, on foreign supplies, most of those from politically unstable and perhaps unfriendly areas, uh, and that we had to do something to, for national security reasons and for reasons of our personal economic security, to, to move away from these foreign supplies of oil. And wind was one of the major undeveloped energy resources that the country had. The Altamont Pass is, is a unique area. It's, in one sense, it would seem to be prime developable real estate for, for housing. Uh, large numbers of people commute through the pass every day into the, to the Bay Area to work, and yet uh, there's very few people living in the pass. And the reason for that is, is the enormous strong winds that blow here. We come in, uh, we develop the land, which up until this point is mainly uh, dry grazing land. Uh, when we're finished, 95% uh, to 98% of the land is, is untouched. The cattle can go on using the land, and we're seeing for 2% of the grazing value lost, we're producing a whole new crop here, uh, a major energy crop. And we're able to harvest uh, 50,000 to 100,000 kilowatt hours per acre per year, which uh, is a major addition to energy. It's uh, the equivalent of, of 100 to 200 barrels of oil per acre per year. Uh, this pass has a total of about 30,000 acres of this kind of wind land. So conceivably, uh, at some point in the not long distant future, we'll have the equivalent of a, of a major oil field here, but it'll be a major inexhaustible oil field. The Jess Ranch in the Altamont Pass is one of Fayette's many sites for the construction and installation of wind turbines. 
Joe Jess and his family have worked these grazing lands for over a quarter of a century. And Joe sees no conflict between cattle raising and wind farming. We use, lose very little ground from the windmills and the cattle feed right up and underneath them. We have a lot of people here working on the wind farm and it hasn't uh, hurt my uh, cattle any. And uh, we work in harmony together. We've been pumping waters for 100 years with windmills, so why couldn't we make power with windmills? Well, I've always had this idea of wind farming. I figured this wind was good for something besides blow my hat off. The wind turbines that dot these hills are bringing a new prosperity to the Altamont Valley. They're also bringing men from the academic and scientific communities to assess the present and the future of this new technology. One of these men is Dr. Forrest Stoddard, who spent his military service as a specialist in helicopter design. It was 1971, and I decided to get out of the service, stop working on weapons, and to do something else. So I joined Bill Hieronymus at University of Massachusetts, 1971. And we started a wind power program there. We built a wind turbine, which is roughly the same size as these. That wind turbine was put up in 1975, and it operated for about five years in Massachusetts. And ever since then, I've been in the wind power industry. I got my PhD under Bill Hieronymus on structural dynamics of windmills. I have a bona fide PhD in windmills. Now, having been in windmills for so long, I thought I knew all the answers. Having come from the helicopter industry, my original thought was, well, the rotor has got to be light. The rotor has got to be sophisticated. The rotor has got to be designed according to the best theories that we have available. I helped to write those theories. Why not use them? So I came to Fayette a year ago on an evaluation for Smith Barney. And Fayette had 43 machines up in the first wind farm across the highway here. And my first look at those machines, and I was disgusted. Here, I had been building a rotor the same diameter, roughly the same power output. And here was a rotor that weighed close to 2,000 pounds. My rotors were weighing 200 pounds. You can't fly a rotor that's that heavy. Steel and a blade, whoever thought of that? You don't, put, you don't make airplane wings out of steel. You don't make helicopter blades out of steel. So my initial feeling was very negative. And then I began to look at the drivetrain. Anyway, to make it short, I looked at the Fayette drivetrain, and they'd solved the problem. Not only had they solved the problem, but they had convinced probably the best manufacturer and designer of drivetrains and generators, that's Reliance Electric, to put their resources in along with them. So a bell began to go off. And the more I worked with that first heavy machine 14 months ago, the more I began to appreciate this approach. By this point in time, probably $150 million has been spent in wind turbines right here. And it has all been private investment. No government investment. This year, that amount may double. Next year, it will probably be 10 times that in just this one area. In California, there are four other areas that are approaching this one in size. The uh, wind farm industry that you see today and the large investments that are taking place, uh, the large amounts of people employed, are the American people's response to the oil embargo of 1973 and the Iranian crisis of 1980. Uh, the U.S. Congress passed legislation in 1978 that made possible the sale of energy by independent producers such as ourselves to the major utilities, guaranteed a market for us. In 1980, they passed a tax credit, a major incentive, 
25 percent investment credit. The purpose of this was to bring private investment into the development of wind energy and other renewable forms of energy. The state of California in 1980 passed a tax credit law which it recently extended for the same purpose. A 25 percent tax credit for the purpose of bringing private investment into the development of renewable energy. The state of California has also spent major amounts of effort, one in the public utility law area to guarantee the rates that were paid for our electricity, to guarantee that those are fair both to us and to the rate payer who buys that, eventually buys that electricity. They've also made a major effort to identify wind resource areas, document those resources, make that information available so that wind farm developers can know what the resource is that they're moving in to develop. These incentives for investment have helped create a new industry in the Altamont Pass. And Fayette Manufacturing Corporation's construction crews are busy daily, building towers, raising platforms, placing blades. If you talk to someone on a construction crew, you'll notice a pride. Particularly at Fayette, there's a there's an esprit de corps that comes from hard times. It comes from living on the edge, living with uncertainty, living with a device which is really more than what you predicted it would be. But these guys have hung together, and they're going to hang together more. It's going to be a giant industry. <laughs>